Here we go. We're going to finish up our photosynthesis units with this, um, this screencast on C4 and CAM plants. Talking about um, kind of an, an evolutionary step that plants have taken in order to combat uh, dry and arid conditions um, and how to still be efficient at photosynthesis when it's dry um, and, and when they have to, to close their stomata uh, in order to prevent from drying out. So let's look at some of the different evolutionary steps that the plants have taken. First, let's look at where we're coming from. Okay, this is the Calvin cycle. We know the Calvin cycle. We've already learned it. Um, this is also known as C3 photosynthesis. It's the regular pathway that we've learned. The reason it's called C it's the C3 pathway is because, as we know, carbon is fixed out of the atmosphere by Rubisco. It's attached to RUBP to make this 6-carbon short-lived intermediate and then 3PG. 3PG is the first stable intermediate in the Calvin cycle. It's a 3-carbon molecule. Therefore, this is the C3 pathway. The first um, intermediate that's stable, that sticks around, is a 3-carbon sugar, the C3 pathway. Now, um, this becomes problematic in hot and dry conditions. Why is that? Well, let's look at some of the, the leaf anatomy here. This is the anatomy of a C3 plant. C3 plants have these mesophyll cells here. These are these kind of oblong shaped cells are the mesophyll cells. These are the spongy mesophyll cells kind of irregularly placed within the um, within this, the leaf itself. There's air pockets in between. This is the vascular bundle made up of um, xylem and phloem to transport food, to transport water. And these are the bundle sheath cells. Okay, Let's think about bundle sheath. We said this is the vascular bundle. This is the sheath that surrounds the bundle, thus bundle sheath cells. They're deep inside this, the, the leaf itself. And their purpose in a C3 plant is simply to transport sugar that's being made here in the mesophyll cells um, in photosynthesis through to this vascular tissue to be transported to, throughout the plant. This, like I said, this is a C3 plant. In these mesophyll cells, both the light reactions and the Calvin cycle are happening. They're both happening here. There's no photosynthetic function associated with the bundle sheath cells at all. So think about what plants need. Well, they certainly need water and they certainly need carbon dioxide. So this, this stomate right here, uh, plural is stomata, but this stomate is going to allow uh, carbon dioxide to come in. It's going to allow for water, for a suction to be created when they're open. They're going to uh, draw water up from the ground and it's going to regulate um, the gases that are inside this leaf. Now, if it's dry, uh, if it's hot, uh, plants are going to want to have these stomata closed. So let's think about what's going to happen if it's very hot and the plants want to still uh, close their stomata. If these are closed, photosynthesis can continue to, to, to a point, but as um, CO2 is not going to be able to get in. CO2 is not going to be able to get in and as the light reactions continue, water is still going to be split and oxygen is still going to be produced. But the O2 isn't going to be able to leave. All right, The O2 isn't going to be able to leave and it's going to build up inside of this leaf. That's a problem. The building up of oxygen, so we're going to have CO2 in here kind of in diminishing amounts because the stomata are closed. We're going to have O2 being increasingly produced as the light reactions continue. And this, that's, that buildup of oxygen is problematic. It's going to cause uh, a situation called photorespiration. Normally, what happens in the Calvin cycle, and we've already looked at this, is that RUBP reacts with CO2 with the help of Rubisco and makes two 3PG molecules. This is a 3PG and this is a 3PG. But recall, it's really hot, it's really dry, the stomata are closed. 
So oxygen is going to build up in here as a, as a result of the light reactions. So let's go back. Oxygen is building up. Rubisco will also react with oxygen. So as oxygen is building up, Rubisco starts reacting with it. That's problematic. RUBP will then react with oxygen. Now, here we have a 5-carbon sugar becoming a 6, which splits into two threes. Remember that. But now, Rubisco is going to start fixing oxygen to the RUBP. Five carbons. We're not adding another carbon. So we still have five carbons. We have a 3 and a 2. This is 3PG. It can continue on and become BPG and make G3P. But this, this phosphoglycolate, it can't. Okay? This is basically a waste product. Um, it's going to go to a peroxisome. It's going to get broken down. It's going to uh, eventually diffuse into mitochondria. And if you're lucky, you can get some CO2 from it. But only if you're lucky. Okay? It, it's a waste. So instead of having two 3PGs to work with, when we are fixing CO2. In photorespiration, when Rubisco fixes O2, we only get one 3PG. So you can imagine that our efficiency when it comes to photosynthesis drops substantially. Okay, so photorespiration is a huge problem for plants. Why? Why is it still around? Why if um, billions of years of photosynthesis. Why is it still here? Well, we think it's an evolutionary relic. We think it's still here. We think it's a problem because if you look at the primitive atmosphere, we already know that there wasn't any oxygen. So when photosynthesis first evolved, Rubisco didn't have to worry about reacting with oxygen as a competitor to carbon dioxide because there wasn't any oxygen present. So Rubisco could go on about its business, fix carbon dioxide, make two, three PGs, and continue through the C3 Calvin cycle. But um, once oxygen was introduced into the atmosphere and it built up, then photorespiration started to occur and it became problematic for, for plants, for C3 plants especially. Um, so looking at this and keeping evolution in mind, well, there's probably plants that have evolved the ways around this, ways around photorespiration, ways around fixing O2 instead of CO2. And you're right. Okay? C4 plants and CAM plants have evolved um, methodologies around photorespiration. Okay? Recall, this is a C3 plant anatomy, its structure. Mesophyll cells. The mesophyll cells all of the photosynthetic processes are going on here. The light reactions, the Calvin cycle. Okay, no photosynthetic process is going on in the bundle sheath cells. Therefore, there's no rubisco in here. All the rubisco is out here, close to the edge of the leaf, where it's going to be vulnerable to a buildup of oxygen. Let's look at a C4 plant. C4 plants. We're talking about. Uh, sugar cane, we're talking about crabgrass, we're talking about corn. They are C4 plants. And you can see how their structure is different. You can see these mesophyll cells are arranged concentrically um, around the bundle sheath cells. They're kind of paired up. All right? And you can see that even the bundle sheath cells look different. Here's why. Photosynthesis is compartmentalized in C4 plants. The bundle sheath cells are involved in photosynthesis. They weren't involved in C3 plants. The Calvin cycle has been moved from the mesophyll cells deeper in the plant leaf. It's been moved into these bundle sheath cells. So the light reactions occur out here in the mesophyll cells. The Calvin cycle and all of its rubisco has been moved deeper into the, the, the leaf. It's being protected, it's being pushed inward away from oxygen that's going to be building out, building up out here. All right? So the stomata can be closed, oxygen can build up, but these are so deep inside the leaf that the rubisco is shielded from that oxygen that's being built up. All right? So that's a, a, a huge evolutionary step that C4 plants have gone through. And I basically sum it up here in saying 
that in C3 plants, both the light-dependent reactions in the Calvin cycle take place in the mesophyll cells. We stated that. The bundle sheath cells contain very few chloroplasts and no rubisco. The Calvin cycle takes place in the mesophyll cells, which are exposed to a buildup of oxygen during hot conditions and are thus vulnerable to photorespiration. This is our problem. How do we get around it? Second bullet. C4 plants move the Calvin cycle and all of its rubisco deeper inside the leaf to the bundle sheath cells where it's not exposed to oxygen. Okay, that's all well and good. But that being said, we still need to fix carbon. We still need to pull carbon out of the atmosphere and turn it into something we can use. We still need to somehow in these mesophyll cells fix the carbon for, for um, the Calvin cycle to, to officially run and make G3P. So how can we do this? Well, recall stomata are closed, oxygen is going to be building up, but there's still CO2 in here. It will be very helpful if instead of using Rubisco that will fix both carbon dioxide and oxygen, C4 plants use an enzyme that ha does not want anything to do with the oxygen that's building up. Okay, Here's our C4 pathway. Instead of using Rubisco, which is tempted to use O2 to fix O2, it uses a different enzyme called PEP carboxylase. PEP is phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. All right, PEP carboxylase doesn't touch oxygen. Oxygen can build up out in these mesophyll cells out here all at once, but PEP's not going to react with it, or PEP carboxylase isn't going to react with it. So that's our major difference. PEP carboxylase instead of Rubisco. Instead of RUBP as the um, molecule that reacts with CO2 or that is fixed to CO2, we use PEP, just PEP, okay, phosphoenopyruvate. PEP reacts with CO2 with the help of PEP carboxylase to make a four carbon intermediate oxaloacetate. Here we are. This is why it's called the C4 pathway. Recall that the first stable intermediate in the regular C3 Calvin cycle is 3PG, a three carbon sugar. Here, the first stable intermediate is oxaloacetate, a four carbon sugar. Oxaloacetate is converted into malate, and recall this is all in the mesophyll cell. This is a bundle sheath cell. Okay, here's our mesophylls out here. Here's our bundle sheath cells. They're connected. They're connected to one another, and they have little junctions. Okay, where things can be trafficked, um, can be moved between. These are called desmosomes. Okay, and the malate kind of smuggles the CO2 into the bundle sheath cell via a desmosome. The malate brings the CO2 in to the Calvin cycle where there's Rubisco, where it, the Rubisco can then fix the CO2 to RUBP to make 3PG, BPG, G3P, and we can recycle and we can make our, our eventually our, our glucose. So malate drops off the CO2 some of the malate, it's a four carbon sugar, it loses one carbon as CO2. The other three are recycled back as pyruvate. Pyruvate is converted via the energy from ATP back into PEP for the process to start all over. So the C4 pathway compartmentalizes this whole process. All right, um, it fixes CO2 using a different enzyme. Um, incorporates it into a four carbon sugar, shuttles the CO2 deeper into the cell where the Rubisco doesn't have to worry about being exposed to the oxygen and the regular Calvin cycle occurs. All right, there's the C4 pathway. Hopefully that's clear. The CAM pathway, Crassulacean acid metabolism. The CAM pathway um, is similar to C4 the C4 pathway compartmentalized it. It spatially separated carbon fixation from the Calvin cycle. This temporally compartmentalizes it. It separates 
um, these processes from night and day. All right. So in cam plants, uh, we're talking about cacti. We're talking about um, pineapples. These are cam plants. And what cam plants do is, well, obviously uh, cacti live in very dry, very arid conditions. So they can't have their stomata open at all during the day. So they open them up at night. And at night they bring in the CO2 and they incorporate it into some kind of organic acid. All right. And it's just like the C4 pathway. All right. They use PEP. They use PEP carboxylase. They incorporate it into um, oxaloacetate and malate, also crassylacine acid. And they store the CO2 in that organic um, acid overnight. And it stays there and it stays there until the daytime. In the daytime, the stomata close and the, the malate delivers the CO2 to the Calvin cycle where it can then run um, normally during the day. Okay, so we have um, a temporal change. At night, we're taking in CO2, we're storing it all night, storing it all night in this pathway as, as these organic acids, oxaloacetate, malate, etc. In the day, stomata close, so it doesn't want to dry out, and the CO2 is then um, delivered to the Calvin cycle for it to run normally. These are huge evolution, evolutionary steps for these types of plants. Um, very advantageous. C4 and CAM photosynthesis is something like eight times more efficient than C3 photosynthesis. So it's a, it's, it's a much more evolved metabolism for these plants. And um, who knows, maybe more plants will be moving in that direction, but we're, we're seeing plants evolve right before our eyes. So it, it really is an interesting thing, and it's something to be noted uh, in our discussion of photosynthesis.